In this installment, we have a very special Monday night two-game slate between the Buffalo Bills and the Tennessee Titans. And we also have another gem in the Minnesota Vikings going up against the Philadelphia Eagles. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chef D, and I'm here to bring you the winning ingredients for your Monday night football slate. We got two games here, not our usual one showdown. We have a two game slate. I'm going to break it down for you. Uh, but before I deep dive into that, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MSNHSD. Don't forget about the TikTok at Chef underscore D91. And don't forget about the Patreon if you want more DFS betting and fantasy football help. All those links will be provided down below. And guys, let's clap it up. Let's clap it up. We have made our mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to Jacob Hart for being the 1000 subscriber. I sent you a message in the comments down below of that previous video. Please get in contact back with me. DM me on Instagram so I can send you something very, very special. But we are at our goal. We are at 1000 subscribers. We are 1000 subscribers, guys. I can't believe it. Uh, this has been what six, seven months of grinding, and we've we made it to our goal of 1,000. We're going to continue to push forward and get to our next goal. That's going to be 2K and, and and beyond, man. We're going to go farther than that. All right. This this is just a stepping stone to another level. All right. Thank you guys for so much for supporting me. I'm going to continue to bring you uh, consistent content on football, on baseball, on uh, basketball. Whatever sport, it doesn't matter. I know them all. All right. So for this slate, this two game slate, you're going to have to get really, really tricky. There's so many guys I want to pay up for. There's so many guys that I want to pay up for in this. It's only two games, but there's so much talent on the board. Let's start off with the QB position. And I'm going to just say this right now. We are not playing Ryan Tannehill. OK, we're not playing Ryan Tannehill. I mean, you could get creative and I mean, he is the cheapest guy on the board at 5,200. But I think the furthest I would go is going to be Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins at 6,200. I love all these guys at QB. Josh Allen is a smash, but you're going to have to sacrifice salary at other position. Uh, Jalen Hurts is another smash in this game between Minnesota and Philly. I think it's going to be a high scoring back and forth affair um, in this particular game. And this man doesn't even have a passing touchdown yet. So that's going to definitely turn things around. Minnesota on the defensive side of the ball is highly, highly questionable. Offensively, superb. Defensively is a question. Jalen Hurts should be able to exploit that as well in this matchup in their first home game. And then Kirk Cousins. All right. Kirk Cousins put up a masterful performance going up against the Green Bay Packers uh, last year week and now going up against philly philly has a solid defense so i think talent will prevail here and justin jefferson is just on another level they have adam Thielen, they have uh kj osborne a lot of weapons they have dalvin cook because we saw philly's questionable run defense uh, that's what's going to hamper them in this particular game but kirk cousins is the cheapest i would go but all of these quarterbacks are going to be viable in this league we're going to put Josh Allen at that number one QB position just to talk about all QBs. And that, that's pretty much QBs. All right. We're going Hertz, Cousins, or Josh Allen in any of one of your lineups. My top two options are going to be Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts. Kirk Cousins can be a, a nice, cheap option because he has that upside. Uh, and you can do a nice stack with Justin Jefferson there, but you're going to have to find some value. Let's move over to the running back position. All right. My favorite play, the guy who has the best matchup is Dalvin Cook. All right. As long as he's staying healthy, he's going to provide major, major upside. He had 20 carries last week. Uh, 90 yards chipped in with three receptions on five targets in 18. So we saw what they were talking about. They were talking about that they're going to use Dalvin Cook more as a wide receiver as well. He was able to run some solid routes and got some production in the receiving game. And in this particular game, if we're looking at fantasy production going up against running backs, we're going to go to that right here, right at lineups.com. This is pretty much up to date. Um, they do ver a very, very good job 
Um, and Philadelphia is 32nd in the league, as you can see. They allowed 172 yards rushing, 6.6 .6 yards of carry, and three touchdowns to running back. So that's going to definitely lean me to Dalvin Cook to have a huge performance in this game going against Philly. Definitely to you know simmer things down, slow things down going against the Eagles' high-powered offense. They're going to need to utilize the running game in Dalvin Cook. So I like him at 8,000. He should be a guy we should pair for. Uh, Derrick Henry, I want to stay away against Buffalo on the road. Yes, they uh, they're going to be out of Dontrell Hilliard in this particular game, but you got to have to fit. You can't pay up for everyone, and Derrick Henry is clearly in a position where this is not a a plus matchup for him going against the Buffalo Bills in a home opener. Okay, we saw what the Giants were able to you know stop Derrick Henry from doing. And Buffalo is just a whole nother level above defensively um, besides the Giants. Like, this, there's no competition there. So I expect Derrick Henry to have another poor performance. They might get creative in using one of their secondary running backs. Um, if we're looking at someone to pay down for, it can be Hassan Haskins. Remember, Dontrell Hilliard is out. Their number two running back is out for this game. And now the guy that needs to step up will be Hassan Haskins, the rookie, all right? He might get some uh, late work because I, I feel that this game is going to be uh, pretty much a blowout. Hassan Haskins it can be a guy that they're going to need to utilize in the receiving and rushing department just to give Derrick Henry a few breathers here and there. There is upside there. You saw how they were able to utilize the number two running back last week. That can definitely happen for Hassan Haskins um, as a, a punt play at 4,200. If we're looking at another running back, cheaper, all right, cheaper, we're going to look at Buffalo Bills guys, all right? That's Devin Singletary, number one. This is the first and second down guy. He's splitting carries in uh, some of the two-minute drills in red zone area with the other guy I'm going to talk about on his team. But Devin Singletary is going to be the guy starting, all right? He was very efficient last week against the Rams, 8 for 48. Uh, two receptions for 14 yards. There's so much focus on Gabe Davis, on Stefan Dix, on Dawson Knox that you forget about the running game. And Singletary has been solid. All right. We saw that stretch run that he had last year where he was averaging over 15 fantasy points a game from week 14 all the way through the playoffs. All right. Singletary has that upside. And with all the focus on the wide receiver, he goes under the radar and can be a big guy to go for in our lineup build. Seven Singletary is a love for this Monday slate. Not only him, it will be Zach Moss. Zach Moss has come in and usurped um, the rookie running back, uh, James Cook here. And he plays solidly. Six carries, 15 uh, yards in that. And... Also chipped in receiving wise, huge six catches, six targets, 21 yards. He did lose a fumble. So that brings it back just a little bit, but they definitely like him in the red zone and um, other particular areas, especially third down as well. That's why he, that's why he got all his receptions, six receptions and six targets. So he's going to be highly utilized in this game as well. And especially if they go up big, they're going to be, uh, uh, benching or sitting single there just a little bit and utilizing more Zach Moss. So he's a guy we can look at if we're looking for punt plays. So we got two punt plays. All right. We got Zach Moss. We got Hassan Haskins. All right. At that running back position for the Philadelphia Eagles side. I want to stay away from Miles Sanders. If we're looking at someone, um, I, I don't, I don't want to say I want to stay away from Miles Sanders. He's getting usage. All right. I, I, the progression of his touchdowns from last year, it has to turn around. This could be another game for him um, going up against the Minnesota Vikings because Minnesota Vikings defense is bottom, is bottom of the league, and you're going to see that. So Sanders can have another game. Uh, so we're looking for cheaper options. If, if you go past Dalvin Cook, there they are solid guys. Sanders, Singletary, Zach Moss, if you want to punt, Hassan Haskins, he's another guy right here. So I'm liking what I see. He was very, very efficient against Detroit. 7.4 yards to carry, got a touchdown caught two balls as well but he is also splitting time with Kenneth Gainwell and Boston Scott so definitely just be aware of that let's move over to the wide receivers guys we want to key in on in this particular uh slate and this is the hard part this is the hard part I want Justin Jefferson 
I want Stefan Diggs. I want AJ Brown and I want Gabe Davis. I want all four of those wide receivers in my lineup, but I can't do it. I can't, you can't afford it. And it's, it's just not going to happen. One of the two, two of these guys are going to have a bad day or mediocre day. Days that are not going to uh, not complement their salary. All right. You need guys to go three, four, five, six X of their salary. Okay. It needs to be worth it. So, one guy that's going to be worth it is Justin Jefferson. I'm, I can't fade him. I can't fade him. This is an offense that is utilizing him in the Cooper Cup way. Do not get cute. Play Justin Jefferson. We saw nine receptions, 11 targets, 184 yards, two TDs against the Green Bay Packers secondary. And we know how good the Green Bay Packers defense is, period. So love Justin Jefferson. He is a lock in each and every one of these lineups. Guys, we can fade can be Stefan Diggs. If we see Buffalo get up, maybe these touchdowns go to Isaiah McKenzie or James Crowder or Dawson Knox or to the running backs. That's why I like Singletary. That's why I like Zach Moss. Stefan Diggs can be a guy we might need to fade in this in this slate. We have to. If I'm going Justin Jefferson, I can't afford both. So guy, someone I might fade, probably will fade, will be Stefan Diggs at 7500 because I think and I see Buffalo winning in different facets. It can be Josh Allen just having a big day, just running the ball, okay? That can definitely happen, all right? So if we go on other than that, A.J. Brown. We can do a nice game stack here with A.J. Brown. He's someone I'm bullying over right now because obviously he had a huge usage in week one. Can that simmer down? It could, but I definitely see him probably most likely getting a touchdown this week. He saw 10 receptions. 13 targets, 155 yards. If you just sandwich Brown and Jefferson together, definitely get the, the bulk of the offense in this particular game. That can be a key to a major lineup. A lot of guys are going to go that way as well, but I definitely have to put him as one of the options that we need to get. Someone else that can be super sneaky at 4,500 is going to be Devonta Smith. Devonta Smith is someone that you can definitely get a little bit contrarian with because he only saw four targets, all right? A lot of eyes are going to be on A.J. Brown, and Devonta Smith is definitely going to turn, turn it around. This is a number two wide receiver. He's not going to have another donut, all right? So we, we see the the potential from last year he, he stepped up as a number one wide receiver now he has help and i see him in this game in game two bouncing back so this is a candidate right here that i definitely want to have devonta smith who's going to be under owned because of that zero that he received in week one this should be a turnaround game for him next guy we're going to talk about is gabe davis hopefully he plays um this might lower his ownership because people do not know. And when it gets closer to lock, if they wait on the news, then Dave, Gabe Davis can be someone that can really set you apart from other lineups. All right. They get the late news in. People don't feel like people are working or busy or just getting home from work. And they, there's an ownership gap. OK, Gabe Davis is the main red zone guy for the Buffalo Bills and for Josh Allen. I mean, we see it continually in limited snaps now he's the number two wide receiver and we saw him get a touchdown in week one four receptions 88 yards and a td gabe davis is someone that i love as well um just make sure that you follow the news on him uh adam thielen is someone we can look at as a cheaper option this is the second option in this offense is between thielen and kj osborne all right if you need to save salary, you can't afford Thielen, then go to KJ Osborne. I have no problem going to KJ Osborne, who's a thousand dollars cheaper. Uh, we saw him in the absence of Adam Thielen really step up as a, a number two wide receiver with five touchdowns in the last six weeks, okay, of that season last year. So KJ Osborne at 4,300 is someone, if you need a, a flex position play at below 5,000, he's a guy you can look for. Um, another cheaper option. Let's let's throw some more of these guys in here. Let, we want to throw all the cheap options in here right now. So we got Osborne as a cheap option. Um, another guy I want to look for is Traylon Burks. All right, we have a question mark on Kyle Phillips right now, the other rookie wide receiver that they have. But Traylon Burks is their prized possession, who they got early in that first round. And at 4,200, he's getting a ton of snaps. He's getting a ton of looks and running a lot of routes. He's someone that's going to go under the radar because they saw the big game of Phillips. Do not 
forget about Traylon Burris. If you see Tennessee Titans down, they're going to need to throw the football. Um, and this is, could be a Traylon Burris game. Maybe I might change my outlook on Ryan Tannehill if I feel like they're going to be down. Maybe we get some cheap points here. Um, and he becomes viable. We just need him to get 18, probably, possibly 20 fantasy points, maybe. He has the capabilities to do that. So I might change my outlook on Ryan Tannehill to get really, really contrarian in these builds because not a lot of people are going to go that way. People are just going to go to Derrick Henry, but I want to fade that part. Um, and I want to lean on to the Tennessee Titans trying to keep up with the Buffalo Bills. So we can definitely think about that. So all quarterbacks are viable. Hope you got to this part of the video. If you're really just breaking down how, the, how these games are going to go. All right. So next other cheaper options that we're going to look at uh we got burks we got smith it's going to be isaiah mckenzie okay isaiah mckenzie came through with a touchdown last week um we only saw three targets from him but he is someone that is going to be utilized very very explosive they use him in end rounds they get really creative with him on the offensive side of the ball and against uh tennessee i definitely see some trickery that could happen just to change that pace um, just because Buffalo Bills like to run up the score. They're going to spread it to everyone. So it could be Crowder. It could be McKenzie. But my favorite out of these two, McKenzie is the starting slot wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills. So I like him as a punt at 4,100. We'll throw him in there as well. Do we have any news on Kyle Phillips? Let's see if we get an update on him. Um, he's still listed, listed as questionable. He saw a high volume of targets. Um, if he is cleared, we can definitely go to him as a punt at 3,600. He has six receptions, nine targets, 66 yards. Okay. Um, this is Rabel. All right. He came from the Patriots. So he knows Edelman. He knows all the, all their, um, slot wide receiver history. So Kyle Phillips is going to, was drafted in that mold. And he also can block. So this dude is going to be seeing a lot of minutes on the field. Other than that, I'm not going cheaper than 3,600. All right, I'm not going Quez. Um, yeah, we're not going that far down. So let's go over to the Titans. And there's some some val uh, value here as well. Obviously, my top play is going to be Goddard at 4,700. Um, tight ends. The worst defense against tight ends right now, I believe. Oh, look, it's the Tennessee. No, no, Tennessee Titans is first. If we flip that around and we go down just a little bit, we have on the slate is the Minnesota Vikings. So that will lead me to uh, Dallas Goddard right here at 4,700. He's still seeing a nice volume in this offense. Um, and at 4,700, nice cheap punt play to have in your tight end position. We're not spending 6,000, 5,000 for a tight end. 4,700 is nice and cheap. If we want to see someone below that, we can definitely get creative, all right? We saw a zero from Irv Smith, okay? And they already came out. Kevin O'Connell already came out. It's going to depend on game plan. So it can be a, a good week for Smith. It could be a bad week for Smith. If we want to take a shot on him, if we're already spinning up at QB, wide receiver, and running back, we need someone around that 3,000 range. And Irv Smith, it can be that guy at 3,200. So I like him in lineup builds. Uh, Dawson Knox, we're hoping that he gets more utilized in this particular game, if Diggs takes a little bump down, is there going to be a lot of focus on him? Um, and other than those two guys, we're looking at, oh, they, they're running two tight end sets with Tennessee. That's why you see Hooper and Jeff Swain. That they're running, they run all three of their tight ends. So you trying to guess which one of those guys, good luck. Good luck. That's going to be a tough task um, to do. So, if we're looking at guys, I want to stick with either Goddard, Dawson, or Irv Smith. If you want to get cute, Austin Hooper would be my last option. But trying to choose the tight end on the Tennessee Titans is literally hard. They play Hooper. They play Jeff Swain, um, who's a blocking tight end, but he sees a lot of snaps. And they also play Okonkwo, who's the rookie tight end. And he was able to get a rush and get uh, a reception as well. So don't touch don't touch that that's that's going to be hard to figure out so we're going to stick with goddard dawson knox and herb smith all right and defensively i would just pay up for buffalo bills at 3200 that's 
that's pretty cheap and if i'm looking at the other side vikings eagles i might want to stay away from that i'm just playing bill's defense okay so we got a line of bills here we still have salary um left over that's because i obviously punted wide receivers but we're going to focus on those parts all right we're sticking with bill's defense we're going with the main three tight ends uh on this slate if you have a gut feeling about anyone else fine throw them in there but i'm not trying to guess tennessee titans uh tight ends wide receivers i gave you uh punt plays i gave you guys we should lean on as starters as well Justin jefferson is a lock and running back we like dalvin cook uh delvin Del, um devin singletary and and punt plays there will be zach moss would be uh kent would be zach moss and would be hassan haskins okay and QB, love Josh Allen. Jalen Hurts and Cousins is going to be the shootout. So I think that can be a stack going either way uh, there. And I see Ryan Tannehill definitely trying to keep up pace with the Buffalo Bills. Um, he might become a, a solid option to go for and could get you 19 to 20 fantasy points as he did in week one. All right. So that's going to be the breakdown for the Monday Night Football slate. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MetsNetchSD. And I'll be back with another video very soon. Peace out.